Howdy folks, welcome to Tuesday's Tips. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, the settings and stuff that you find on uh, cell phones. Um, because, you know, a lot of people will take your phone out, you'll take the pictures, you might use a, one or two of the other modes, but what all, what all does that stuff actually mean and what is it kind of doing for us? So, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about briefly today. So, um, <clears throat> just so you guys know, I have a Samsung Galaxy. I do not have an iPhone. So, if you're using an iPhone, you may or may not find some of these settings. But that is okay. Alright, of course, some of the basic things that you'll find on there, of course, you'll have the, the, the switch where you can turn on and off the flash. Uh, usually you'll have a little thing for where you can set it for a timer so that way you can you know, run and get in the picture yourself. You can usually change the aspect ratio, uh, meaning how square or rectangular is the, the, the picture. Um, now, <clears throat> my, um, my phone has a setting called motion photo. And what that does is it shoots like a mini video. Um, and then you can go through and pick the exact frame that you want. And you can turn that into your actual final photo. Um, so like if you're trying to catch something like um, somebody jumping in the water and you want to catch them at a specific point, then that will let you do that. Um because otherwise you're going to have to be shooting in a burst mode. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> I'm still just trying to get used to this um, uh, new diet and stuff going on. And then uh, another thing that, uh, that uh, my phone has is um, you, you can set filters for it. So you can change it for it being warm, cool, uh, different kinds of things like that. Um, personally, I don't, I don't use those, um, because I'd, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather just, uh, do that kind of stuff, um, in post-production in a different program. Now, it also has a thing here for, uh, changing up uh, the um, as a filter changing up the um, the face you can I like smooth out the face and that kind of thing um, now that's the, that's what we got across the top up here um, now another thing that we that I have here are three quick buttons where it's a, a zoom uh, a standard you know, and then uh, a, a wide angle. So rather than having to pinch and everything else to, to get the uh, the um, aspect that I'm I'm wanting, uh, it'll do that. The other thing that it has down here is it'll actually um, it actually has some different presets. You know, one time, two time, four times, ten times. A hundred times. Yeah, that is way too zoomed in. All right. So that's just some of the quick zoom f features that it has. Um, then, of course, there's the video function that a lot of us are used to. Um, again, you have your aspect ratio, your frame rate, which is another thing that's up here. Uh, your frame rate is how is uh, waiting for my brain to catch up here with me. Uh, your frame rate is how many like little frames per second is it doing, and I will tell you how uh, smooth the the video will be. Uh, again, it has the filter things. Now it also has this little thing here where it shows a hand. And it's uh, 
it's kind of a, one of those auto stabilizing things. So that way, if you're trying to do a video, the little trimmers of your hand aren't going to be showing up on there. Now, um, there's other aspects that we have on here. Um, you have a panorama, which will let you actually slowly move the cam, the, the phone, and will stretch that whole thing out into one big wide shot. Um, they has a portrait mode, which I've talked about before. And what that does is that kind of focuses in on the near subject and makes everything else around that subject have a slight blur to it to simulate having the depth of field uh, that you would get with a uh, with a wide open aperture on a, on a uh, uh, standard camera. Um, and then um, food mode. And what this is, is, is very similar to um, portrait mode in that what it's doing is um, the center area of your sh of, of, of what it's doing for the picture is going to be what it, it rather than having to judge what um, the subject is for it to be able to uh, keep that in clear focus and then you know blur the background the food setting what it does is it gives you a circle a circular area in the center of the frame and that's going to stay in clear focus and then it starts to blur as it goes out to uh, and kind of a Gaussian blur to give you that same kind of effect so that way if you if you're taking pictures of food and it'll have that in in focus but it'll blend everything else into kind of a blurred background and then of course it, it has the uh, where you can you can change that how big that aspect that circular aspect is on there for the food um, but you know, that's how it depends upon how you want to do it. And then it also has a night mode, which basically uh, makes it so that it is super sensitive to um, to light. So that way, if you're shooting at a low light level, um, and then it also has a thing to do slow mo, super slow motion, and then time lapse, where you can put it all together. Um, so there's that kind of th different things that are in there. Uh, and then, you know, for, there's also the pro mode. And what that basically is, is it's like, okay, now you have to go in, adjust the white balance. And basically it's a whole 100% manual settings. So if you're used to shooting with cameras and you know how you want to set I'll tell you folks, it, when when you change your diet up all all of a sudden, it is it is it is amazing how <clears throat> your body is changing on these kind of things. Yeah, and I'm just I'm running up right on toward when it's gonna be time for lunch, so uh but anyway. But basically what it does is it lets you have a lot more control over the um how how the uh, picture is going to be made you can adjust the exposure over under um, all those different kinds of things now the thing to to keep in mind though is with a lot of this is that it is not actually setting like your aperture and some of those kind of things because all you have on your phone is your is your little sensors right here it's not actually moving through a lens and having the different effects that you can get from having your 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 aperture wide open, which gives you the shallower depth of field, or having it down close, which will give you that farther depth of field, so it'll allow you to have the the different aspect of that. Plus, it changes how much light actually is reaching at a given shutter speed. 
it's simulating all of these things. It's not you. You don't actually have a shutter on here, you, so you can't set a shutter speed. It's simulating it. it. You don't actually have an aperture on here. You, you, you're simulating it. It's so the software that's in there is giving you the, some of these kind of effects. Now you can set, you know, the white balance, which works pretty much like the white balance on your camera. Bloody hell, man. <laughs> And then um, the ISO works fairly similar to it. But basically, that is how sensitive is the sensor acting. So when it comes to some of these things, you're, you, these phones are great at simulating and giving us the effects that we are used to seeing in a lot of uh, what uh, you can do with a camera. So um, if you're somebody who's doing just a lot of things with your phone, I would encourage you to look at some of those those features and and uh, see what we, what you have now if you're catching this live you'll be seeing the live right here um, and uh, if you're not uh, drop me a hashtag replay down there in the comments also if you've got a setting on your phone and you're not sure what it means or what it's doing for you or when you would want to use it uh, drop that in the comments below and I'll be happy to reply and and give you my insight in that and uh, If you're asking me about an iPhone I'm, Unless it's a similar feature to what I have on my galaxy. I'm not sure um, I don't use iPhones. I do have access to one though that I can sit and play with or or ask my my wife who is the iPhone user I'm getting questions about X. What is that? Uh, and she might be able to tell me. So that's kind of what I, I wanted to. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to cover today, because, you know, a lot of us are doing a lot of uh, f uh, photos with our phones. Because let's face it, it's a it's very convenient to, to be able to snap quick pictures with your phone uh, as opposed to having to dig out and use cameras and all that kind of stuff. Now, depending upon what it is you're trying to do, use the camera. If depending upon what you're trying to do, use the phone. They're two, they're both great tools that can be used to help um, capture those images that we, that 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 we want. So I'm not saying one is better than the other. They're two different tools, and they're two different. There's two different things that they will do for you. So with that in mind. Uh, thank you. And tomorrow for Wellness Wednesday, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about my wellness journey and the realization that I'm not as young as I used to be. But so join me for Wellness Wednesday tomorrow at noon central. Um, and uh, hope to see you there. And for those of you who are new to photography or you have things, if you've got questions about things or, or th something that you'd like me to talk about to help you understand different aspects of photography or video or lighting, please drop that in the comments. Send me a message. Let me know. I'd be more than happy to do a video to help you figure out how to use some of these things so that you can get more enjoyment or better images and, and, and that kind of a thing for you. So in the meantime, peace, love, and photography, folks. And remember, everything can make a beautiful image including you. Have a great day. Bye.